All right, I gotta say something. And if you don't wanna listen to this, just skip to the one minute mark, we'll get into the card making, okay? Um, yeah, it has been an incredibly wild ride. When I started doing this as a hobby and then kind of just started filming and putting cards up on YouTube, I never really had a journey or a path that I knew I wanted to follow. I never really had all that many goals. And um, I can't believe how much this hobby has opened up for me over the years from working with great companies to working with amazing fellow crafters to attending and traveling um, worldwide for conferences. Uh, to hosting events like the Paper Crafters Get Organized that was awesome this weekend. And then now I can officially say I, I wasn't sure if there was anything less left to accomplish and it just happened. So for the last six months, you might have noticed videos have been a bit sporadic. Actually, they've been sporadic for a while now because I've been working on bigger projects behind the scenes. And today I'm excited that one of my big projects is officially here. And it is that I launched my own craft line and I have my own product release and I'm very, very excited about that. So for those of you who know my channel though, you know that anything I'm going to show you now as far as card making goes can be applied to so many different things and can be applied to many of the things you have in your stash. So don't think that you need to have all these products in order to make these amazing cards. Okay, but for those of you who, you know, want to see the inspiration based on what I've designed or see what I've come up with or maybe see how it's a little bit different and how I tried to be a bit innovative in its creation, then yeah, this is for you. <laughs> All right, so I'm gonna take you through a bunch of the products here. That's just a very small release of a few items, but I wanna show you how they all coordinate with each other while making a ton of cards. So the first one is a hexagon cover plate, but it comes in two pieces and there is a reason for that. Now you can use the rectangle that it comes with to make a four and a quarter by five and a half inch card panel. Now, of course it's easier to cut this with your paper trimmer, but I don't know about you, but my paper trimmer blades always seem to be dull and then my papers are fuzzy and I just like to have a die cut now and again for when my cardstock is like this and I can't get a new paper trimmer right away. The other way that you can use it, of course, is each uh, with the pieces together like this or the hexagons on its own and we're gonna see what that looks like all together. And now let's take a moment and admire the fact that these are brand new plates. Cutting into brand new plates is like hard on the sole though. All right, so you can see when using these both together, it cuts out just like a normal cover plate die, nothing overly fancy about it, but I cut out this once uh, using white cardstock and once using a blended ink panel and we're gonna be creating a ton of cards with them. Now I also wanted to show you what it's like to use it without the rectangle. So you can put it onto a piece of cardstock regardless of the size. And what it's going to do is it's going to cut out the rectangles or the hexagons rather for you. So the cool thing about this is you could add this to let's say a 12 by 12 sheet of paper, like a scrapbook or something. And you could add, cut a whole bunch of hexagons out of it without cutting the cardstock, like without cutting this rectangle out of it type of thing. So you can just cut hexagons with it. Um, I like to do this, for example, if I'm using a super pretty patterned paper for scrapbooking, but I'm gonna put a photo frame over top. I can go ahead and grab these hexagons uh, cut them out of my scrapbook paper. I have a whole bunch of really pretty embellishments and then I can cover up my hexagons with a photo paper and just you get more out of that piece of pretty pattern paper. All right, so I'm gonna grab uh, some ink blending tools and just quickly ink blend a background. I'm going to be die cutting this with the hexagon die. So the nice thing about that is I always find when I go into the mentality of I'm going to die cut this, I know my card panel doesn't have to be perfect because even if it turns out to be kind of a hot mess, the die cutting actually makes, kind of breaks it up and any blemishes you might have, you won't notice. But the other nice thing is I find when I go into the mentality of this doesn't have to be perfect, I always seem to do a really good job ink blending. And I just like to grab little bowls like this. I find them always for like a dollar at stores and I grab a bunch of them because I like to keep my little embellishments in here while I'm working. So I kept some white hexagons and I kept the colored hexagons because I'm gonna use these on several cards. So I'm gonna go in and I just added some glue here. This is something I always forget to do. Of course, you could use double-sided adhesive sheets, stick it to the back of the cardstock, and then you have all your hexagons and your background with adhesive on the back already. But I forget this every time. So I just fussy glued this onto the background. Using another white hexagon background, I'm gonna attach this with some repositionable tape, non-permanent tape. And I'm gonna grab some of those hexagons that I created here and I'm not worried about if they're dark or light or whatever. I'm just gonna grab a bunch of them and just fill in the gaps here. I'm using the 
white frame here only as a guide so that my spacing remains even and then I'm going to remove it so this is a great way to use up those hexagons that you cut out without having anything go to waste so you can see here you can even get the tiniest pieces in there I like to hold them down with a bone folder and just really stick them down to make sure that they stay in place and then you can remove the stencil as long as you didn't get any glue on there that we just created so I've gone ahead and glued down the colored panel here and I am filling in some of the hexagons with some white pieces. This is not a necessary step at all. I just like the smoothness it kind of gives, make it seem like it's one layer in its own way. You can do partially where you only do some hexagons. You can do no hexagons. You can do all the hexagons, whichever you like. All right, so now that we have a whole bunch of backgrounds ready, we need something to decorate the cards with. So I created this stamp set here, and I wanna give you a little tip. When you get it, all of the stamps, the way they are on the carrier sheet are in the exact way you would line them up on a sheet of paper. So what I did was I lifted them up and I created a little dot or a little line on the center of each of the stamps, okay, or on the top of each of the stamps. That way I know if this line always faces the top, then they'll line up super easily. If you ever have trouble lining up uh, layering stamps, this is something that you can do. I also did this with the die so I would know exactly which direction the die goes because I wanted to create a sunflower stamp that was as realistic as possible, which means every petal is going to be different, which also means if you don't do this, it's a pain in the butt to line up. I'm not going to lie. Okay, so I did this because I want to give you that realistic look, but do yourself a favor and put this marking on here. You can even put a mark on the paper that you're stamping on if you like to know like, okay, this is exactly where that petal goes. And you will line up your stamp perfectly every time. And you don't have to sit there fidgeting and turning left and right or anything like that. And if you're like me and you happen to remove the stamp from the packaging before you put the dot on, just line it up again. Lining it up that one time will do the trick. Another thing that I like to do is I like to grab, let's say this leaf stamp, and instead of moving the stamp each time, what I do is I actually flip over my cardstock. So I'll have it in the two places where I flip it from one side to the other. Sometimes I'll rotate it one side to the other too so I can get four leaves without having to move my stamps and I get perfect placement every time. Now do yourself a favor, just like the stamp set, go in and place a little dot on the die cut as well. And then you'll notice if you get the hot foil plate that coordinates as well, you can do this also by just lining them up and then marking the place that you have marked off. Now, a little bit about my line here. I wanted it to kind of work as a kit in the sense that everything coordinates together. So if you get the stamp and the hot foil plate and the die, they all cut each other out and all work with each other. You can hot foil on its own. You can hot foil with the stamp, you know, that kind of thing. I wanted to make it as versatile and useful as possible. And there are just so many little surprises I find in the collection that you probably weren't expecting. So what I've done is I've grabbed this die here and you'll notice it's a solid die, meaning it's not an outline die, it's a solid die. And there's a reason for that. Let me zoom in and I really, really hope you can see it. Now, it has really subtle, beautiful score lines, really detailed lines in the die. And that's the reason why I left it solid and not an open die. But some of you might be saying, well, that's hard to line up. Well, I'm going to tell you something else. Now, I've created myself a frame here so I can line up the die cut and then I can stamp. And because I have everything marked off with that dot, it all lines up super easy. Now, for me, I think the worst thing ever is for me to stamp four layers of a stamp. I mean, it takes a while to stamp four layers of a stamp. And then I go and die cut it, regardless if it's a solid die or a die where I can see through it and line it up as I like to think perfectly. When it goes through my die cutting machine and it screws up and it's not lined up perfectly and I just spent 15 minutes stamping something, I want to cry. Okay, <laughs> so I like the fact that here I'm die cutting first. I have all my flowers die cut. I stick them in my frame and I stamp once. And guess what? If it screws up... I've only stamped once. I've only die cut the one time. I can toss it and reline up my stamp. If I had already stamped everything, I'd be so mad. And this way, I can just do multiples and multiples and multiples. And guess what? When I do layering flowers, I do like 10 or 15 of them because I don't like to pull this out every single time I want a sunflower. 
and stamp this. I would rather stamp it 15 times and have a whole bunch in the stamp pocket. Okay, now let's see these sunflowers in action. You can see I stamped a ton of them and I still have a few left over. Grabbing some 3D foam tape, attaching them here in various places to my cardstock. And I'm trying to leave as little space as possible in between them. So what I'm doing is I'm actually going through after attaching a couple of them and trimming them already. Because I'm going to try and use up these small pieces before I go and use my full flowers. Because why not? And um, this just helps me save uh, sunflowers. It helps me save some time and also helps with the waste issue. So I'm going to cover my entire background. It's one of my favorite things to do with large flowers like this. It's almost like creating pattern paper, but look at the texture and the depth you have. You have a layering stamp plus foam tape. It looks absolutely incredible. And my favorite thing to do when I do have a lot of color like this is to help the colors pop. One way to do that is white and the other way to do that is black. So I've got the white cardstock going on for me in the background. And now I'm going to go in and I'm going to add some black Nouveau drops just to um, the areas that aren't as full. And those are going to help the cards pop. All right, so that's one card pretty much complete aside from the sentiment. Going on to the second one now, I have this sunflower that we've already created as well as the leaves that we've already stamped. So I'm going to add the leaves behind the flower. I always like to put my flower on a bit of foam tape so that I can add leaves behind them at any point in time. And I can stick them wherever easily by just slipping them underneath. Now, if you thought this was cool by having the die with the textured lines, the layering stamp, um, you know, all of those things that coordinate with each other, I also designed a hot foil plate to go with these. And the hot foil plate can function on its own or it can function with the stamp set. So again, the stamp set's a standalone. You can create that as is. It's beautiful, stunning, realistic, but, but you can create even cooler looks with the hot foil. All right, so I wanted to show you one little thing. Now, if I were to put this hot foil plate through my machine and run it slowly through my die cutting machine and follow the sandwich steps according to the manufacturer, what might end up happening is you might not get a really great impression. But I'm gonna show you the easy tip to get a good impression because solid hot foil plates can be a bit tricky. One is I leave it to heat about a minute longer than the machine says. And two, I add a thicker piece of cardstock, 110 pound, to my sandwich, and it's fine. It just gives it the extra little pressure it needs in the machine to foil perfectly. Now, if you ever have trouble with your foiling and it looks more like a distressed look than a solid foil, this is what you can do. Add yourself a little shim, a little cardstock shim, like we just did. And the second reason why it might not foil properly is your paper. So try a different paper and see what happens. And of course, if you want to die cut it, I recommend, again, grabbing that frame, lining up your die, and if you're using relatively thin cardstock, you can just run it through your die cutting machine just like this. If you have thicker cardstock and you aren't sure if it'll cut through both pieces because your frame's in the way, just add a little slit to the side with your scissors, lay down your die cut, and then you can just remove carefully the frame and attach it using some adhesive so it doesn't shift in the die cutting machine and you'll get a perfect die cut each time. Now it will work on its own as a standard foil sunflower and it can be used on any type of cardstock, any color, anything like that. But what about on an already stamped sunflower? What is that going to look like? I grabbed myself an extra long piece of mint tape and I lined up the flower super easily here. I'm gonna slip the foil underneath, being careful here that my die cut doesn't slip, and I'm gonna run this through the machine, and I'm gonna see what happens. And this is just something, again, to take that stamp to the next level, but if you don't have the hot foiling machine, it's okay, you're still gonna get a beautiful stamp. So you'll see it in close up more detail um, when I put it on the card because I have it on a little bit of a weird angle right now. Um, but you will see it on a final card in just a second. Um, the foil just looks incredible. I love the shine it gives to it and it works so well with the stamping. So let's add it to a card. I'm going to grab a little bit of gold thread. I haven't done this in a long time, but I saw a card with it recently and I was like, oh, I totally forgot you could use that as an embellishment. So I just kind of put it randomly along my card, attach it with a little bit of scotch tape, and then I'm going to add my foiled sunflower over top. And it just gives it just a little bit of an extra background and makes it look super cool. 
You can also adjust the threads as needed to make it look a little bit more random. And then to top off the card, I just added a couple of little sequins here, some gold ones, just to really make that gold shininess pop. Love the way that this turned out. I think it would look great with that hexagon background on a white and white look as well. To add a little bit more gold and tie things in here, I've cut a bunch of these smile die cuts, which come with the, I believe the stamp set, and um, you could add these uh, on as a standalone. You can cut it a couple times and just create a bit of a shadow. You'll see here I have one cut in black in the front and one cut in gold in the front, and both of them look fantastic. I love the way that they look. So that is one card completely finished. And then going to the second card here, I have the smile um, already uh, cut. And then again, gold, 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 lots of gold. This card looks so elegant and lovely. And you can take a final look at it there. And then coming back to this card that we created with, again, adding a little bit of sequins, the hexagon background, you can stamp. The sentiment stamp is fantastic. Uh, you could, it's just got all occasions on it, a bunch of miscellaneous things. And I like the fact that it has some very thin fonts. It has some brush fonts. It's got a little bit of everything. Lots of very practical sentiments as well. I'm just going to back this up on a little bit of gold cardstock to pass with the embellishments. And then I'm going to just add it to the front of my card here. I always have trouble sometimes figuring out where the sentiment's going to go when all my elements are already added. <laughs> and then just finishing up the cards here, as I said, um, I like to just add a bunch of sentiments to them. I always tend to have the sentiment as sort of an afterthought. I mean, usually I know the theme of the card that I'm creating, like, do I need to thank you, a happy birthday, whatever. But since I create a lot of cards just for the sake of being creative and not necessarily for the sake of giving them out, I like to make things with all sorts of sentiments on them. And um, the backgrounds I find to be the most fun and setting it all up. The sentiment's just the final little touch. All right, working on this really colorful background this time. I found that that flower was getting a bit lost, so I added a piece of vellum. I had this old hexagon uh, uh, die cut, and so I grabbed it in a piece of vellum. I did put it the opposite way as the other hexagons on the background, but you don't see a lot of it, and that's why I put it that way. And then I just added this on top and it's very, very subtle, not something a lot of people would even notice is there, but I do find it makes a world of difference in helping the flower pop off. And then I was able to add some thread and just make it more interesting. All right, we got a few extra pieces and I wanted to show you one thing and I saved the best for last on purpose. This is my favorite die out of the whole collection, okay? And... This is a border die. I love border dies. I think they look so elegant. They're so much easier than using punches and things like that. And I'm going to just put this in place here towards the edge of the cardstock. You can put this as far to the left as you like, depending on how much color you want shown. Now, when you take it out of your die cutting machine here, you'll notice that the pieces fall out like butter. Um, like I said, it's a very intricate die, so you may need to put it through the machine going once back and forth, and you may need a shim depending on the type of machine that you use. I didn't have any issues, um, but you know, it depends on your machine. <laughs> So what I did was grab my panel and prop it up with a bunch of foam tape here. I don't cheap out on my foam tape. I don't like saggy cards. <laughs> and I'm just going to take this all off and stick it on top of a card base. On the card base to the right, I did a little bit of ink blending. I showed you that at the beginning of the video. I didn't have to do the whole card either because most of it's covered with this white panel anyway. And I stuck it up, be one on 3D foam tape because it gives me a pretty shadow behind the flowers and it gives me a little bit of texture. If I glued it right on top, it would also look great, but it just gives it a little extra touch. I added a small little sentiment to the front of the card on top of an ink blended frame. And then I just added some of the hexagons for, uh, because I had a whole bunch left over, so why not? <laughs> So yeah, I know this is a longer video, but let's just recap the cards that we created today um, and how everything just kind of coordinated together. So starting off with this hexagon, super simple, quick and easy card, and then going into some of the intricate stamping. This is the stamping with the hot foil plate that coordinate with each other that come as a bundle or separately. One with just the plain layered stamp on it and the hexagon background in white. This is the hexagon background in color, stamped image beautiful setup here. My favorite or one of my favorite cards with the flowers all over the background just looks great. 
And then, of course, the one we just finished creating with the beautiful border dies. So I hope you enjoyed my first collection of stamps and the inspiration that went along with it.